This is the Ducati Multistrada V4 Rally, a bike that in Ducati's words is made to unlock the world. To create this figurative world key, Ducati has taken their fourth generation Multistrada platform and done some tweaking to create one of the most premium, technologically advanced, powerful, capable, and expensive adventure bikes ever made. With such a bike to share with us, Ducati wisely selected the San Juan Mountains of southwestern Colorado for a two-day ride that had a little bit of everything. World-class, twisty two-lane roads, high-speed gravel, a proper serving of dirt roads, two tracks, and a run over Cinnamon Pass that reaches 12,620 feet above sea level. If you've ridden here, you know it's some of the best ADV country around. And if you haven't ridden here, you're going to want to by the end of this video. Starting from the ground up, the Multi Rally has a 19-inch front and a 17-inch rear wheel. Our bikes were wearing optional Pirelli Scorpion Rally STR tires. The standard shoes are Pirelli Trail 2s. Connecting these spoked wheels to the bike is fully electronic suspension, Ducati's Skyhook DSS Evo suspension that offers 200mm or 7.9 inches of front and rear stroke. With a few flicks of a control stick on the left hand switch gear, riders can adjust suspension settings to their preferences and riding conditions. Another button on the left hand switch gear lets you tell the bike whether you're riding one up, two up, with luggage, or if you just want the bike to set the perfect amount of sag for the weight it's carrying. The Rally's suspension also has a minimum preload function where the bike will reduce seat height when you stop and easy lift, which softens the suspension up to make getting the bike off the side stand easier. Speaking of seat height, the Rally has a number of available seats, and combined with different seat positions and an optional lowered suspension kit, I'll just say there are many different seat heights that can be configured to help rider better fit the bike ranging from 805 millimeters or 31.7 inches to 905 millimeters or 35.6 inches. The standard seat can be set at either 870 millimeters or 34.3 inches or 890 millimeters or 35 inches. I opted for the standard seat in the high position and found it ideal for my six foot one inch frame. On the standard suspension, ground clearance measures in at 235 millimeters or 9.25 inches. The cockpit experience on the Rally is in a word great. The rider position is quite comfortable and I can't think of a better adventure bike cockpit for taking on something like an iron butt. You might think that a bike that weighs a claimed 573 pounds and that carries 7.9 gallons of fuel in its brushed aluminum fuel tank would feel massive between your legs, but it doesn't. The bars are right where you would want them and adorned with switch gear that's easy to use once you learn their layout. This switch gear controls a 6.5 inch TFT display that does a great job of communicating information to the rider, but it's easy to outrun the menu tree once you know where to go, so I wish the UI was faster. One last but very important callout on the cockpit is the windscreen. The height adjustment system for the Rally's windscreen is the best system I've ever used. You simply press a lever to drop the windscreen and pull up on that same lever to raise the windscreen up. The heart of the Rally is the 1158cc V4 Gran Turismo Evo engine and it's one impressive motor. The rear cylinders deactivated idle are at light engine loads under 4500 RPM which helps with fuel consumption and heat output. Service intervals are oil every 9,000 miles or 2 years, and the first valve check isn't until 36,000 miles. The advantage of these longer service intervals is that they allow more freedom in planning long distance travel instead of having to build a route that's limited by the range of an oil change or other service interval. It takes mere minutes of riding the Multistrada V4 Rally to appreciate what an amazing grand touring bike it is. On road, the Rally quickly instills confidence with its smooth and tractable power. In touring mode, the bike glides over imperfections in the road, and while all 170 horsepower are on tap, the medium power mode provides great control resolution over that power, so riding in traffic and cruising along at a spirited pace is an effortless affair. The bike makes miles melt away thanks to its dialed ergos and that wonderful windscreen that in the high position provided great wind protection at any speed to my body and MX style helmet. Other tech features like blind spot monitoring and adaptive cruise control may sound unnecessary, but once you put them to use, going back to a bike without them will have you missing those features. The challenge when riding the rally on road quickly becomes balancing keeping your license with your lizard brain desire for more throttle. The V4 Gran Turismo Evo engine is hard to put into words. Once you open it up, this motor will keep pouring on linear power for so long you can't help but glance down at the dash to confirm what your ears are telling you. Yes, RPM is in fact currently being measured with five significant figures. When you do eventually decide that you should slow down to speeds where you'll actually keep your license if you're caught, the Rally's Monster 330mm front brakes have all the stopping power if not the most consistent lever feel out there. Squeezing the front brake lever hard while stopped will also activate hill hold mode, which is a great feature for making quick stops to futz with some piece of gear. 
After getting to know the bike in touring mode, it was time to click into sport mode to see what the rally could do on some of the best two-lane road in Colorado. Sport mode backs off of the intervention from the acronym soup of rider aids and puts the bike in high power mode. I also opted to customize the ride mode by stiffening up the rally suspension. Red Mountain Pass has a little bit of everything. Rapid successions of corners that let you really appreciate side-to-side -side transitions, 180 degree horseshoes, and all sorts of increasing and decreasing radius turns with elevation changes and exposure for good measure. If there's a better place to see what an adventure bike can do on road, I have yet to find it. As expected, on road, the rally is outstanding. The bike is precise, nimble, and tracks through any shape of corner brilliantly, and in short, it's way better than I am on road. But then, what else would you expect from a Ducati? Well, how about off-road performance? On high-speed dirt and graveled roads, the V4 Rally is a treat. Switch to Enduro mode, push the windshield down, stand up, and get after it because this bike is great fun in the gravel. With the rubber foot peg inserts removed, the Rally standing cockpit is a comfortable place to consume dirt roads, with one exception. The foot controls could not be adjusted to what I would call ideal positions for off-road riding. Both controls are too low and that makes them harder to use. Enduro mode limits power to 114 horsepower and its default suspension settings did a great job soaking up the bumps, embedded rocks, and chatter commonly found on dirt tracks. This bike is a dirt road magic carpet and I wouldn't hesitate to ride hundreds of miles of dirt in a day on this bike. The motor is content to just cruise along so you can take in the scenery or with a twist of the throttle able to rally quite aggressively so riders can choose their own adventure. Traction control and other ride mode customizations can't be done on the fly, so you'll have to stop anytime you want to make an adjustment. As the road becomes more lumpy, bumpy, and jumpable, stiffening up the suspension lets the bike carry more pace and enjoy plenty of airtime before you find the limits of the suspension travel. Where other Leader Plus bikes start to feel very out of their element when the trail starts to get rocky or technical, the Rally is still eager to keep charging and it's deceptively capable in the dirt. Yet the one aspect of the bike that gave me pause when it came to really pushing it off-road are the included hard boxes. I would personally remove these for another luggage solution right away. By the time we rode over Cinnamon Pass on the end of our second day of riding, there wasn't a line on the trail that I would hesitate to point the rally up, and that's a testament to how dynamically capable the multi-rally is. Ducati has built one hell of a bike in the Multistrada V4 Rally. The bike is an absolute weapon on-road, and off-road it's quite capable, but then it should be given the price it commands. The bikes we rode start at $30,595, and that's before you factor in the accessories like crash bars, fog lights, and the extra guards Ducati added to our bikes. This price point knocks the rally off the radar for many riders, but for those who can afford it, the multi-rally is a premium bike that's quite capable, packed with tech, and an absolute hoot to ride. If this video was of value to you, please like, subscribe, and let us know what you think, or post up any questions in the comments below on the Ducati Multistrada V4 Rally. Thanks for watching. Don't run away, you don't gotta honk at him.